Good morning, gang. Greetings from a cold, snowy East Tennessee. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I guess looking around, uh, watching what's going on, I guess about half the country, somebody, news was saying 154 million people are under some sort of winter weather, weather advisory of some sort. So, yeah. So it kind of brings me a little bit to what I want to talk about today. And, you know, so many channels, so many people, myself guilty, some of it sometimes too, talk a lot about what the causes are. And I try to stick to, to some solutions, all right, because I can't change what happened yesterday. It's done. It's in the history, history books, you know, even though a lot of people want to erase the history books, it's still there. Okay. But I can't change it. So... I want to pose a question to you guys, all right? Let's imagine that for the rest of your life, however long that would be, you know, five years, 10 years, 50 years, whatever it would be, you couldn't leave the boundaries of your property. Do you have the infrastructure? Do you have everything you need to survive? and live, okay? And you all know why there's a difference, in my mind, between surviving and living, okay? Now, everybody says, oh, that'll never happen. Now, let me give you a quote here, and I'm going to kind of use this a little bit as I go. All right, Babe Ruth. We all know who Babe Ruth is, okay? And one of the quotes was asked, he was asked one time about, does he worry about striking out as, as much as he does? And Ruth's quote back was, Every strike brings me closer to the next home run, okay? And that's very true because since the beginning of time, people have been predicting the end of times. We know that, okay? Watch any football game and the guys with the signs or the guys with the sandwich boards, whatever it would be, okay? What I can tell you with 100% certainty is we are closer today to the end of times than we were yesterday, okay? That's just a fact, all right? One day, none of us know when, eventually it's going to hit, okay? And so I ask you, are you ready, okay? And I'm going to give you this about the end of days, if you will, all right? And this comes out of 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And I'm just going to read it to you. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. Does that sound anything like the world today? To me, it does. Okay. You know, especially with everything going on, you know, with the World Economic Forum and the divisiveness that we see in the country and everything like that. This is kind of where we're going, all right, that Somehow, some way, and I can't tell you how, I'm not a prophet by any means, uh, the end is coming. And whether it's going to be the end economic, uh, economically, the end uh, civility is pretty much, we already know, you know, I mean, people just hate each other. We see that daily, okay? But the civility in the world has disappeared, okay? And then you get, along with that, the stoking of the fire, okay, between politicians, between the news media and everything. And I'll give you one more Bible verse here that I think is pertinent. And this is Isaiah uh, chapter 5, verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is what we're seeing, guys, okay? And I say this because of kind of what's going on in the country, at least right now, with this massive polar vortex. Okay, I looked at the, the news this morning. 
it was actually colder in Brownsville, Tennessee, southern tip of Tennessee, or I'm sorry, Brownsville, Texas, southern tip of Texas, right there on the Mexican border, than it was here for me in Tennessee, okay? If you've all seen what's going on in Texas, you know, Texas got their own power grid, all right? Like half the state is without power. They're doing rolling blackouts because of power outages. All right? People are staying in their cars to stay warm because their apartments and their homes, they have no electricity to heat them. So they're going out to the car, starting the car, and warming up in the car. Dangerous, yeah. Uh, hopefully they're not doing it in a closed garage. But this is kind of the thing, guys, all right? Do you have your infrastructure set up to the point where if suddenly it was not safe, let alone possible, for you to leave home, can you survive? Can you live? And I'm talking about more than stocking your pantry with food and all of that, all right? You know, some of the normal prepper things we talk about, you know, food, ammunition, communications, whatever. Yeah, those are very important. But let's look at right now, 2019, last number I could get, or last year I could get numbers for, 1,300 people in the United States died from exposure to cold. Now that doesn't sound like much, but remember this, we're pretty much the most industrialized country in the world, apartment complexes, homes, built businesses, buildings, everything, all have heat. There's plenty of places to go to get out of the cold. And still, 1,300 people died from exposure. Now, imagine right now we have this weather system, this polar vortex coming in, and you don't have power. You don't have electricity. You don't have gas. You don't have anything. I mean, the number one search, Google search in Texas right now is where to get firewood. Okay, so, you know, do you have that taken care of? I mean, that's a prep that you need some way to heat. A lot of houses don't have fireplaces. Do you have an indoor, very important here, indoor propane heater or indoor uh, wood-burning stove or anything that's properly installed that you can heat yourself? Because, I mean, you can freeze in your house. If it, I mean, it's down 30 below for some places in the U.S. You know, it's not going to take too long till your house gets very cold, too, no matter how insulated it is. You know, and if it's zero in your house, yeah, you can freeze to death inside. Okay. So, I mean, have you got those things taken care of? You know, we talk about food all the time. You know, have you got that taken care of? And sure, you've got your beans and rice and your canned goods and your canning jars and everything, and that's all fine and dandy, okay? Do you have some source of food if you can't leave your property, okay? Maybe you live on a lake or a river that you can go fishing from. That's great, okay? But, you know, maybe you can't go hunting in your backyard and get, maybe if you're lucky, a squirrel, Okay, so what are your options going forward? Because if you leave your property, now you are going to be at great risk. That's, that's kind of the point. Remember, when we go into any sort of SHTF situation, it's, for the most part, not only going to be us, it's going to be everybody. And you're going to see a squirrel, and so, other, so are six other guys. And everybody's going to be going after that squirrel. Somebody's going to get it, and everybody's going to claim they did. Now you have a fight over a squirrel. Okay, that's a real possibility, guys. So you know, what are you doing? Do you have some sort of heat source? You know, we could talk about generators and some sort of power source. Uh, but I mean, unless you've got, you know, a good size generator to run your furnace or whatever it is, that may not necessarily be the end all be all. Okay. I'm assuming everybody here has got candles and lanterns and something for some sort of light, but eventually batteries are going to die. You know, you say, oh, I've got rechargeable batteries. Well, you need electricity from somewhere. Okay. That's going to come from your generator. Okay. If it's solar, great. You know, maybe it's going to work. 
Uh, if it's gas, eventually you're going to run out of gas. But again, the solar generator. Look at Germany right now. Germany runs on a lot of solar power. What's Germany got a big problem with? All the solar panels are covered in ice, and so therefore they are not uh, functioning. Guess what? No power. Okay. Same issue. Now, for people in my area, chances not, you know, that we're going to have ice that long we'll be okay, okay? But let's say you live in Minnesota, you live in North Dakota, Montana, upstate New York, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Chicago, whatever it would be. All right, you know, you guys know what cold winters are and cloudy days. I mean, I remember living up north. I mean, it'd be six months before you saw the sunshine because it was just gray and overcast all the time. So, you know, do you have your infrastructure set up? Can you grow your food? Can you heat your house? You know, air conditioning, we can all deal with the heat. They did for centuries without air conditioning, okay? But heat has always been a necessity for man. I mean, you know, ever since the cavemen, they were building fires to warm up, okay? We can deal with the heat. We can't deal with the cold as much. So do you have something like that set up? We talk about security. We talk about guns. We talk about food. But right now... Even if it's not affecting you now, we don't know if this is the last winter storm this year. And, you know, most people don't think about this, but guess what? Winter is going to come again next year, and we're in a grand solar minimum, and this is supposed to last pretty much for the rest of my lifetime, so we're going to have colder winters. Okay, global cooling, guys. Okay, scientific global cooling. Uh yeah, you need to prep for this. You need to get some sort of heat source. And, you know, your your little Mr. Buddy or whatever it is, or Mr. Heater or whatever they're called, you know, that's great until the propane runs out. And so, you know, you need to be thinking about stuff like this. Yeah, I get a, get a propane heater right now. That's totally cool. Okay, but you've got to have a bigger picture plan. Because when we start calling good evil and evil good, which is kind of what the world's going right now, and we know what all the yahoos over in Davos are trying to do to us, they're, you know, just like this, going, ooh, look at this, another crisis we can just, I mean, you know they're excited, okay? Because it's another way for them to just beat us down and take our will away. So get your infrastructure right. Think about it. Everything, anything. Imagine living in your house. Can't go anywhere. Not for a week, not for four days like this storm's supposed to last. Think of it for a month. Think of it for three months. You plan that long for your food. Plan that long for everything else. Because your life's going to depend on it. Have a good one, guys. Pinball out.